I've been teaching my children about positive energy and how you can make a difference in yourself by simply believing and to every negative has a positive so look at the negative that you had today look at what was positive in it and run with the positive positive. and we've been doing this for I don't know two weeks now I've been going to leadership classes and my organization that is teaching me all of these kind of things is helping me tremendously so therefore I'm helping my kids with it our children are our future so I might as well help them so yesterday I go to pick my kids up from school and my child tells me my son who's 10 tells me that he had a slight problem today but first before we get into that I want to ask you do you have 100 percent confidence in our school system do you believe that our school system is doing the very best they can for our children? Our current school system. Because on my way to pick my kids up, I see these signs a lot that say homeschooling. Is it time to homeschool? They have a huge question. Big banners. Is it time to homeschool? And there's a phone number. Now, I've been seeing them for a long time, but I just recently have been paying attention to them. There's a difference. I saw them, ignored them, kept going. Now I see them, think about them, think about them more, and then wonder what's going on. So back to the situation at school. So I say, okay, well, what is the problem? And he tells me that he had a substitute teacher today, which he has a substitute teacher a lot of days. They complain when my child's tardy, yet the teacher's allowed to not be there a lot of the time. Well, here's my dog, Jackie. She wanted to get in the photo, too. Say hi. So, how is it any better if the teacher is not going to be there to teach and the child's five minutes late for school? They bring up everything that's a problem for the parent, but nothing's ever a problem for the school. And I find that to be something that doesn't make any sense. How can the school never be wrong, but the parent's always wrong? Isn't it a community that raises children? That's how it was when I grew up. The neighbor would tell you what to do down the street if you weren't doing something right. They'd call your parent and tell your parent that they punished you because you didn't do something right. It was a community. Everybody was involved. Now, oh, it's all up to your parent. If you don't listen at school, we're going to call your parent. If you don't do something right, we're going to call your parent. Okay, what am I going to do when I'm not there? Seriously? You can't handle my kid for whatever hours you have him or her. I have two children. One is 10 and one is 6. But it's, they call about everything. So my issue, though, is are my kids learning? I know about all the petty stuff about them calling and they don't have detention any longer and they don't have this and they don't have that. It, we're a kinder school. Yes, but the kids aren't getting better results. So... Is it better to be kinder with no results or a little bit tough with some results? And then they have these tests, FCAT tests and all these tests. Oh, so we know where they're at. Does it really mean that's where they're at? When I went to school, it was to learn. It was about learning. If you took anything out of it, you learned. You need a test to tell them if they learned? We had tests. They were every week. Every other day, they were called spelling tests or math tests. The teacher gave them. Then the teacher knew where she needed or he needed to work on to, to get you to learn better. No, now we have to prepare for six months for one big test. And now when the one big test comes, if you don't get it, oh my gosh, what happened to the six months before that you were doing? Where are the small tests to see where we're going? I don't know. I seem to have a problem with this. I just went to a conference, too, where they tried to tell me that FCAT's coming up and they tried to give me all this advice on extra tutoring and stuff like that. Now, FCAT's in 25 days. Okay, what happened to the rest of the year? I signed my child up for any free tutoring if they offer it. Because I told him, free, hey, take it. If they're going to teach you something extra, and they're going to help you learn something extra, and maybe it's a different person influencing the way you learn it, take it. So we always go. And it's not, it's not a negative. Any, anything extra you can get is always a positive. So, 
back to what we were doing, what we were talking about. Do you think that the school system is doing our kid justice? Do you think that our children are actually learning? So my child has a substitute yesterday. And the substitute needed to go to lunch. So the coach came in to give to break them for lunch. Now the coach is one of these people that neither one of my children are really like. He doesn't have any compassion. He just goes about his own way, and if you don't fit into it, then oh well for you. So he was relieving the class for lunch. And my son, Nicholas, said he was doing a writing assignment. Again, you see he goes to writing tutoring because he's not the best writer yet. But that doesn't mean he won't be. So the coach comes over and sees his paper and doesn't like it. Instead of just making it, hey, I don't like your writing, you need to change it a little bit or you need to work harder or whatever. No, he makes a scene. Now we teach our kids not to do this, but it's okay for the teacher. He takes the paper, he rips it in half, and proceeds to crumble it up in front of my child. Then tells him how terrible it is. This causes the children to all take attention to it. And when they pay attention, they all start laughing. Well, not all of them, some of them start laughing. They think it's funny that he's getting, you know, brought in front of the class, basically, pointed out. And then my child loses his temper, so there goes his positive attitude that I keep working on him with because he didn't think that was fair. No, it wasn't fair, but not everything is fair, and not everyone is nice, but we have to be what they aren't. We have to have positive thoughts, positive actions, positive everything. Because we're going to overcome all those people. We're going to only meet them once or twice and we're moving on because they're staying there. If you want to do better, you just remember that you are better. And you just keep telling yourself that and you will get there. You will get there. So this brings me up to the meeting, which is all related to how they treat the children. So we had a conference and the principal decides she wants to be part of this with the teacher. And usually these conferences kind of are run by them. But not, not this time. No, not this time. Because I am not going to put up with it. I'm not going to stand for you to tell me what everything wrong with my child. If there's everything wrong with my child, it must be everything wrong with me too. Because he's my child. He has my bloodline. I'm the one teaching him at home. And if you're going to sit there and put me down, we're going to have problems. And you're not going to put my child down. He's only 10. He still thinks everybody in the world is wonderful. So, I go to the conference. In the conference, they tell me that they'll give me all the help they can for tutoring. So basically, they're doing everything for me. They're on my side. All the help they can give me for tutoring. First, they told me that I could have after-school tutoring with one of the teachers. She declined. So, where's all the help tutoring? Then I signed up for a tutoring class that was supposed to be on half day, which was yes yesterday or today, and it got canceled because only four students showed up, or four students said they would come. You can't help those four students? If we don't get enough, we can't help? Why couldn't you have just helped those four students? At least they were the ones wanting to get the help. So, now, I'm in their, I'm in their office, in their world, in their elements, so they can try to control me, and it's not going to work. They say, even with all the help that we give your child, it may still not be enough. Okay, let me think about that. So are you saying that my child is doomed? And I did say that. I'm not giving up on my kid. What parent gives up on their kid? Not you. Not your neighbor. Not the people you know. Not me. I'm not giving up on my kid. And then they say, well, that's not what we meant. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's what you meant. So there comes my Taurus and me coming out. And I say, look. And I stay positive. You'll be proud of me. But I was firm. And I said, look here. Whatever help you give my child will help him. It may not help him today, 
It may not help him tomorrow. It may not help him for the FCAT in 25 days. But whatever you give him, he's taking it in. In one day, it will click and it will show up. So there's nothing about, oh, it may not help. Everything helps. It's just a matter of when. They take in everything that you give. And it doesn't always show up right away. Their little brains are filled with so much stuff going on that they have to, like, process it. Once it all gets processed, it'll show up. It will show up. So I say to her, my, the principal, I'd like you to talk to my son on your own and explain how what he does today affects high school, affects him getting into maybe band or a drawing club or something like that. Do you know, she goes and gets him in the middle of the conference when he was in, get this, are you listening? Tutoring. He was in writing tutoring. The same very thing that they're concerned about, they pulled him out of writing tutoring to come to the conference. That is not what I said to do. I asked her to make time, make time out of her busy day to talk to my child. No, she can't do that because they have pep rallies. And at pep rallies, that's where she does that with groups of kids. Okay, fine. Do you feel that the school system is not treating your kid the way they should? Do you feel that the school system is letting our kids down? Because either you're the brightest, the brightest kid, the brightest star according to them, and they take a big interest because it helps them with their budget, or you're the slowest kid, doesn't mean that, you're, that you can't learn, the slowest kid, and they get extra money for the budget. But if you're the average kid, the average child, you get left. You get left behind by them. Well, that is crap. And I'm hoping these videos go around to everybody so everybody can see how I feel. And if you feel the same way, maybe we can all do something and make a change. Because it's only us, us sticking together, that makes the change. And they hope that doesn't happen. They don't want that kind of change. Because then we are telling them how our children are going to learn. And they are not telling us what our children are not learning. I'm Vicki Brown. My website is fighttheforcesofevil.org. Check it out. Join me. Make a comment. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. And I'll talk to you in the next video.